Hi, this is Michael Adams for CEO, Roaster.com. I'm still in Toronto at the PDEC, and it's actually the last day. And uh, yeah, I'm lucky to have Kiro Clip. Yeah, I, I tracked him down because there was some really huge developments today in the company uh, that I would like to get some more insight. So thanks, Carol, for taking the time on this really successful and busy day for you. Um, thanks for taking the time. And yeah, as I said in my introduction, there was some really good developments today. You had issued a news release from Mariana. So tell us about it. Yeah, thank you very much, Michael, for having us on today. We have a very, very important day for our company. But first of all, I would like really to caution all your readers not to jump in their <laughs> chairs. Please go to our website and read carefully our disclaimer and never do any investment decisions without proper investment <laughs> advice from a qualified financial person. But also you have to read carefully our news release today because for, sure. for us it's a groundbreaking news. Finally, we are getting on the map of, I would say, largest salars in the world. We are announcing very initial resource estimation on a huge brine lithium system in Argentina. And of course, it's our main project called Mariana, right. where we are developing it together with one of the top lithium producers in the world, Ganfeng Lithium. Right. So we are very all excited about Yeah, I can imagine. And we, we did a couple of video interviews already where we talked about Mariana, but also about the other projects, right? You're in Europe and in, in Canada. Um, but yeah, so again, I think it's a really, it differentiates you from some of the other players in the market yeah, and brings you to, to, to no total new stage. Yes, that's right? true. Right. So, um, and then I, I hope that because right now the share price is a little bit depressed, right? And that's pro probably because, yeah, the lithium market isn't that hot any longer. Yeah. If, if people are looking for it. Um, and, and a lot of companies already failed in the lithium sector so and that you are one of the companies and you survived lithium 1.0 as we said yes, yeah? yes now, exactly. now you're surviving and you are still in lithium 2.0 and you will be probably around in lithium 3.0 <laughs> so um but let's let's focus on a little bit the, the developments in the past there has been some changes in the management team and in the focus or the business strategy of the company so can you give us a little bit more um insight on that yes michael that's true and i'm very pleased to report that our transition is going very smoothly. I'm very pleased with it. Basically what happened, our major shareholders being Gunfeng Lithium is our cornerstone shareholder and invest in our company. They are holding close to 18% right now. Right. I'm the largest individual shareholder. I'm clo uh, holding close to 10%. And our holding company, Tina Gold, holds around on par with Gunfeng Lithium. So basically now we're controlling all the strategy of our company. And it's very important for your audience to know that we are all in the same boat. We are really looking to the end results. And mm -hmm. end results today, it's a huge announcement for us because before, you know, we were talking a lot about Teslas and lithium right. chemistry. Now and you I, have something. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Now we have something and this something is very tangible. I will caution one more time all your readers not to be just excited, but read it very carefully. Right. It's very initial resource estimation, but now we will be getting on radar screens all over the world with this very important huge lithium brine system called Mariana in Argentina. Right. And moving forward and also considering the other projects, um, before we, we talked a little bit before we started the taping and you said that the business model is kind of changing towards a, let's say, later stage approach yes, instead of yes, developing and spending exactly. all that money. Give us a little bit more. Yes, this is that. correct. And now I really start looking at the situation last year more carefully and I start to think we have such a huge asset in our relationship with Genfeng Lithium. Now I managed to build such a strong team at the board level. We have Wang Xiaoshen who is an executive vice president of Genfeng Lithium. Mm -hmm. We have David Shen representing Genfeng Lithium as well with us. We have John Wiesby, very successful entrepreneur from United Kingdom. He built two software companies uh, in a banking enterprises. Okay. We have 
Ross Thompson, who is a master of behavioral marketing, and today I gave you that transformer, right. mind branding machine. Yeah. So I started to look at it. Where is our value? And it's definitely not in the very early initial stage exploration uh, uh, projects anymore. We really, really would like to be focused on potential M&A activities, because now we have such an interesting portfolio for all industry insiders. And here I must tell you, Michael, you know, I was meeting all these days and you know how busy was yeah. it uh, and uh, now we have a very casual conversation just try to pass a little bit of this vibe right. to your audience. Yeah. It's a zoo. <laughs> It's a zoo, yeah. So I met with Chinese delegation okay. and they asked me for good half an hour everything about our project. I met with Canadian delegation, with all trade commissioners here. I met with uh, Argent uh, delegation from Argentina and I will have a meeting in a few days time with Minister of Mines in Argentina. So we really truly have established the very great example of international cooperation between Canadian company, right. Argentina and China and we build this relationship. And Russia. And Russia, of course, <laughs> yeah, me being originally from Russia. And now we are building this very, very important project. Mm -hmm. And we have also, as you know, our project in uh, Ireland, also right. in joint venture with Gunfang. We have two projects in Canada already, joint venture with Pioneer. We have another project uh, open for discussions. My email box is filling up with all these new ideas. <laughs> okay. But like you said, I would like really to build Goldman Sachs and Lithium on the hedge funds okay. of style of things. We would like to buy into the best projects at already recognized potential stage, yeah. move them forward with all our strategic partners in place. And one more time, Genfeng, it's not just the capital. Capital now we can find it's for the, good teams when I'm building yeah. this very strong team. But it's technology. Yeah. It's technology. Because with Genfeng on just these few projects, we are building exactly what they would like to be in production. Of course, few years still right. down the road. Yeah. We still have to prove economic potential. But we know what we are doing. We are in a sugar business for Coca-Cola. Right. And you know, yeah, because Gangfeng will be the buyer of the lithium, you know what they want. Exactly. So you can exactly look or your new team. Yeah, um, I had the pleasure to talk to your new COO and you might uh, give us a little bit background yes. on him. But um, he will be the one yeah, with this new approach to identify these later stage projects. And if you ask me, and we just said that yeah, lithium right now is not the hottest flavor of the month. So a lot of companies are probably releasing later stage pro projects at a very attractive valuation, exactly. which then can be picked up by you, as you just described, yeah, with the funding, with the technology, with the knowledge, um, pick up these projects, exactly. development them. And and that's another good thing, yeah, because as you know, yeah, my readers know, my viewers knew that uh, it takes like years and years and years and years and a lot of money to develop projects from grassroots up to a, a later stage and with this new approach you probably have some more upfront payment to get your hands on the project you but you have to have less expenditures yeah to develop it and then the period before you can sell it or before it's into production is way shorter so yeah you, the return on investment should come in earlier exactly exactly and when i'm talking about hedge fund approach Please don't get me wrong, I have a very no, strong no. mining team, yeah. and today I introduce you to Anthony Kovacs, yeah, who is give mine. Give us some background, Anthony. Yes, Anthony is a very strong professional. Actually, he was the one who was heading all our team, and today I would like to use this opportunity and congratulate and thank all our team at ILC and Genfeng, because we reached this very important milestone for us, announcing an initial resource estimations at Mariana. So he has a very strong background in mining, more than 22 years. Okay. He started working for Anglo-American. So he was uh, one of the f first in uh, development of a lot of uh, commodity-based deposits like iron ore, vanadium, nickel as well. And like we discussed with you before, With lithium, we have a very, very special situation because a lot of people now jumping like from former gold or copper exploration into lithium place. But every single lithium deposit has its unique chemical signature. And okay. this is why it's so important that we already 
plugged in into Genfeng and building vertically integrated system. Okay. But now with these new ideas, basically what we're gonna do, and this is where hedge fund words are coming to mind. We will be managing risk. We will be allocating our venture capital in the most efficient way. And first of all, we will start with our portfolio. Yeah. Now we're looking at all spectrum of our projects. What makes sense? Where I should increase my stakes? Where I should allow my partners to increase the stakes? Where maybe I can combine a few projects? Right. And now I have all this pipeline coming into projects because people really recognize the strength of our team. Like I said to you, my mailbox is filling up with a lot of proposals. Yeah. But I have Anthony and very strong financial team who can recognize and selectively cherry pick the best opportunities for us. And now we are building very strong financial partnership. I will keep it a secret for another interview. <laughs> of course. When we can really back up all our ideas. Yeah. And as a cornerstone, we have the strongest partnership with industrial leader in our business Genfeng Lithium. Okay, so I really think that's, that's the right approach at the right point in time. Um, having this new approach yeah, and what you just said, like being later stage, do you assume that ILC will be a preferred investment for more the institutional uh, or professional investor or is it also a really good chance for the retail investor, or probably both. But I would, I would bet that yeah, if if you can execute on what you just said, yes. that a lot of the resource funds, yeah, will buy in because they get a whole ex exposure to a whole number exactly. of projects. Exactly. And here I must again warn all your readers that <laughs> it will be very important to understand that it's still a risky model. Sure. But what I'm trying to do, I would like really to move us on the risk spectrum from early stage exploration, just managing the project and more if you like to royalty model. This yep. was another part of our announcement. Right. And I now, every time when I make an investment, I would like to know my exit strategy. What yeah. will be the exit strategy? Particularly for smaller folks who invest in money, and for them it will be very important. I'm one of them. I put a lot of my family money on the line. So when we are making money, I'm making money only with you. Mm -hmm. And what is very important? I was investing in a company which a lot of... Uh, Gold investors know by now it's Royal Gold, right? right and I yeah. was buying it below five dollars and I was very happy <laughs> seller at 70. Yeah. And you know, gold did beautiful things on all the way up, then it collapsed. But Royal Gold, even after collapse, was still up. They have a very ro robust business model. Exactly. Because, they because do the what we are doing yeah. now, we are shifting the technical, geological risks out of the picture to the people who can manage it. So we will buy projects at a later stage, right. and we will stay until the moment when we really think that allocating our capital can bring more return to us. And right. in some projects, we can even choose and be diluted to the royalty. But what it means? It means that I don't have to allocate any more capital for it. For example, if I will just stay one day with royalty on Mariana, yeah. It will be very significant it like yeah, because to stay in yeah, this yeah. royalty on uh, yeah. one of the largest copper <coughs> deposit or whatever. Yeah. But along the lines, we would like to look at all these opportunities when it will make sense for us to sell some things, to buy some new things. So right. I really would like to have this proper portfolio management approach when I can manage my risks. But because this industry is literally expanding so fast, we will have so many opportunities to properly apply our very limited capital, right. which I would like to be very careful because number one message I would like to send to all your shareholders, potentially who is looking at us or to all your audience, I am very strict with dilution because I'm diluting myself yeah, I would say, and I don't yes, like I it. <laughs> no, nobody likes dilution, yeah, but you know, some, some points down you have to of raise course. money, but if you can can invest it in a good way that it and bring more money, money exactly. then it's all good. Exactly. And I know that especially the Germans, they hate dilution, I hate dilution, everybody hates dilution, but you also have to consider if the company management can bring in more value, then it's all worth exactly. it. So, um, you are also recognized as one of the top 10 leading experts on lithium in the social media world, <laughs> yes. right? You have a blog, you have Thank a Twitter you. and everything. So and now that I have you here, I have a couple of uh, questions. Let's, let's forget about ILC for now, just like the, the commodity. Yes. Um, there has been uh, a, a lot of companies have been promoted out of the, 
I think they call it petrobrine lithium yes. area, right? Um, with new technologies. And then so give us your two cents about petrobrine lithium. Okay, okay. Because you are not involved in petrobrine no, right now. No. Will you be? No. Okay, why and not? And here I must be very careful. First of all, our community is very small. You know, and I wish everybody very big luck with all ideas and all projects. Right. But if you're asking me and people would like to read more about our business, about my approach, yeah. what this guy is talking about, what kind of portfolio management style, I can tell you that now we have this lithium 2.0 stage when everybody who can jump into lithium uh, business, they yeah. would like to do so just because the commodity <laughs> is finally picking up right. and finally all my talk about BYD, Tesla, and yeah. Gunfire. What you did for Exactly, like for years, years yeah, and yeah. years. Yeah. And now people are start literally searching for lithium and everything. And please not forget, maybe even the better story will be tried to extract it from very old 7-up bottles. <laughs> there is still some lithium left. Okay. Or like some people are talking for years, oh, there is lithium in the seawater. Of course, lithium is everywhere. Yep. It's one of the most common elements from the moment right. of uh, universe of creation of universe. The most important question here, can you economically extract it? Right. And this is what will separate a lot of investors with dream yeah. And from their money, unfortunately, when people will not be able to deliver. That's why, one more time, I cannot stress enough, and I think only later when we will see what the recognition of our story will be developed by Mr. Market, who is brutal normally, yeah. only then people will realize <laughs> how long it took us to build the most important part of our business, mm -hmm. strategic partnership with Genfeng. Yeah. Because Genfeng is not looking for the lithium from all seven up bottles. Yeah. And with a lot of ideas now, people are going more and more into the risky spectrum. Yeah. And all these <coughs> titans of our, titans of our industry, they really focused and interested on proven technologies. Because right. for them, Maybe they can back some outcast technological projects, but they would like to be certainty. And now security of proper lithium supply is everything. And they backing the well-known, very well-developed technologies. Okay. Yeah, what I think what people have to understand, and it took me a while to understand, is that it's not lithium is equal equals lithium. It's not like you know, if you have one ounce of gold, you have one ounce of gold. Exactly. If you have one, yes. ounce, one ounce of silver, you have one ounce of silver. It's more probably like oil. Yeah, we have like the different sulfur levels. And yes, so yes. Different, different oil needs different treat. I call it heavy chemistry. And different chemi right. chemical signature. Right. So, so there's applications. Yeah, that need let's say this special lithium exactly this one that is probably on mariana or someone else and they if, if you supply them with other lithium they can't work with it is that exactly kind of right exactly exactly okay and in some cases for example somebody is developing lithium project and they don't know to whom they're gonna sell and then big guys will come in and they will try to sell them uh, sign off take off uh, lithium agreement but they will have the tune all the production cycle is just to accommodate this project. Right. It's great if these guys are fortunate enough, the project is big enough for one of the largest companies because it's still very small market by numbers, but very controlled. 75% yep. of lithium hydroxide production is controlled by China already on raw material uh, level right. base, right? right. So, these big boys in the end will need to decide they really would like to go with your project, like you said, not only based on amount of lithium even in the ground or in the brine, but whether it could be economically extracted, number one, right. whether it big enough to adjust their production project, invest hundreds of millions of dollars just to use your commodity. Right. And with us, we settle this problem from the beginning. If we will be lucky enough to produce later when we will approve all necessary technical and economical standards, we are already doing it from the very, very beginning. So this is very big difference with a lot of companies out there. Okay, great. So thank you very much for, first of all, uh, telling me about the changes, the future, uh, about, I'm really excited yeah, with this new business model, which kind of differentiates you from all the other guys that are just looking for lithium now, and now even in Petrobras. Um, anyway, um, so that, that's really uh, good. And of course, I learned 
something new again about lithium. Yeah, having one of the top lithium experts worldwide here. Um, so very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank Carol, you very much, Michael, for this opportunity. And. Um, yeah, if you like um, my to watch my videos, please subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and uh, you can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. And for now, thank you very much from the PDEC 2017 in Toronto.